Oh. <laughs> May didn't come in today. I don't know where it is. Uh, my next guest is, uh, how would I say that she fits in this evening? She's um, probably uh, uh, lovelier than Dean Jones, because she's a lady. Uh, she's uh, softer than Muhammad Ali. <laughs> oh, Norman Mailer doesn't think I'm introducing him. Uh, she's, uh, she's a very unusual lady. She, uh, her name is Madeline Kahn. She's a remarkable actress with a, a brilliant voice and uh, a peculiar head. <laughs> This is as bad an introduction as I've ever given anyone, but I, will you welcome, please, Madeline Kahn? A fascinating lady. That was quite an unusual introduction to give. Kill your head. They say yeah. that my head and my body don't operate. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think it's Where? preposterous. Head and body myself. don't go together. This sounds very familiar. <laughs> Helen Gurley Brown. Yeah, you saw that. Very yes, I, saw that. I still haven't figured that out. Don't even. It just. Don't worry about it's, it. It's preposterous. Um, have you ever had amnesia? Uh, no, no? I have. Every, I think everyone has moments of um, aphasia. You know what that is? I don't. But it's aphasia. Uh, <laughs> Is something you know, about you can't understand what's being said to you or something? Well, when, yeah, you, something, go, something doesn't work. Your ability to find the right words, mm. any words, and, you know, and that type of thing. Of course, when it happens all the time, you're in a phasic, but it can happen at moments to anyone, I think, you know, or for minutes or just moments in your life. But I, no, <laughs> I go through that. That's normal. You do. What would it be um, like? Be, can you illustrate it if you're in the middle of a sentence and... Well, it's, it's um, using the wrong uh, word instead of the right muffin. You see, you know, it just doesn't make oh, sense. I see. Not, yeah, like that. Were you illustrating it or having it happen to no, you? No, no, I did it on purpose. Oh, you did do it on purpose, yeah. Yeah, I, I used to be a speech therapist, um, and so that's how I know about that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny uh, to be here, Dick. Um, Isn't no, it? No, I feel a little odd these days coming on and um, whereas it used to feel perfectly fine to come on a program like this and be sort of um, weird and a playful, a plaything, an entertaining type thing. Mm -hmm. um, a party doll. Yes, like uh, of one sort <laughs> or another, the neurotic one or whatever. Yeah. Um, it feels it feels different now than it used to. I mean events in the world have for instance reached my uh, sensibilities where, and I'm the last type of person to be reached by events. I don't ever think they really pertain to my life. I notice mm. them and I think they're awful, but I don't see how they really will interfere with my life. Well, I'm one of those people who mm. has noticed <laughs> that they do interfere and that there is something to be done and all. So, so this may be one of your last frivolous appearances? No, it, you, you know, the nature, yeah, no, I, <laughs> no, I, I think. I think that thing is happening. You, you feel, I mean, I feel like the thing, I want to be part of a movement of some kind. I, I always did, really, and uh, I, I never really liked the image of woman as being a plaything. I mean, I always found it offensive, the image that Cosmopolitan presents of the woman, for instance, I always thought was offensive. Did you? Yeah. So I never liked it, but now, um, now I, I really feel like becoming part of something useful, but I really don't think I can. Is there a place for you in women's liberation? I really, you know, the thing is that I have been thinking of some of those basic tenets for a long time, but I have the feeling that if I went down to a group, I'd, I wouldn't fit in. I never have, in my other attempts earlier in life, never worked out. For instance, when I was in college, when I was first beginning college, the thing then was to be, I think, a beatnik, I think is what they used to call it. There were these girls in, who dressed all in black and had long, straight brown hair, which they clipped back mm -hmm. in, a, in a barrette. They had white lipstick. I mean, the whole effect was sort of very serious and sort of like a cadaver. And, <laughs> and they were very quiet. And you got the impression, as I certainly did, that they were quiet because they were so intelligent. There was just nothing to say unless it was a gem, you know? <laughs> and I was sure that this was true. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I, um, I, I, I was aware of my intelligence and all of that, but I always felt, um, so the opposite of them. I, mean, I tried so to fit in, but 
I didn't look like they did, and they just rejected me. I mean, everything about me that mm. didn't go along with the way they looked seemed to grow when I was in their presence. You know, I mean, my hair would just curl, and my, my lips would turn red, and I, my voice would get higher, and I, you know, I, um, in, in something, I don't, in discomfort because I was so afraid that I'd be rejected by them, and of course I was, you know. I just, uh, there was no way I could be included in that group where I really was of one in accord with them mentally, but my packaging was so... <laughs> just was the wrong Thank you. I'm yes. so glad you understand that. Well, <laughs> just, I, I, the point, the point that I, that I know now looking back on it is that the... One of them, or two, or whatever, did open a mouth at one time and did say something. And it was pretty dumb. You know, it was dull. And then I figured, gee, the reason they're giving their mouth shut so much is because they don't have anything to say. You know, they yeah. were quite dull, most of them. Some of them were and some of them were. It was just that they were in the right. They had the look, and the whole thing was right. So they were in the intelligentsia. Uh -huh. Now, um... Do you have any idea what the question was? <laughs> Uh, but uh, you, Madeline was telling us earlier, if you just joined us, I, I don't really think I could summarize it, but um, well, how, could you bring us up to date a little bit before? You, you can, uh, basically, uh, I mean, you, what I was saying is that one can grasp the basic essentials of a movement, mm -hmm. and yet if they don't adopt the trappings, you know, the style of it, they're out. They're really out. Now. I, for instance, have always felt very uncomfortable in the, um, in the very restricted fashion world, the image of, of Vogue and Bizarre, and, uh, because uh, you know, mm -hmm. that's what the look is, and that's what's pretty, and if you must work to fit into it, with hair teasing, bleaching, packing the body in, and the, you, know, it's, you, you really have to put forth an effort to fit in, which I always found would give me a headache, always gave me a headache. Um, and so I was so pleased when uh, the, whatever you want to call it, uh, the hippie or whatever type movement started to take place where the essentials of it were that dress the way you want to, don't do, in fact, if, let your hair grow, let it all grow, don't shave, don't do anything, which, I mean, the, the thought behind that is terrific. In other words, it doesn't matter what you look like. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of Christian. I mean, it's one of the, a, a terrific, uh, yeah, you know, really Christian. In other words, that everyone is, you don't have to be anything that you're not and that you're all God's children. It's terrific. Well, I couldn't wait to get down to one of those little stores to buy some dungarees. Uh, you know, because I thought, oh, these are the, this is it. These are going to be the people. The, no more will I go into a store and encounter this glum woman staunch behind a, uh, a counter who says to me, oh, no, dear, that's not for you. This is for you. And then you buy it. Mm -hmm. I won't encounter that. I'll, I'll, I'll encounter the, the uh, receptive, the, I'll be receptive, an expansive, a largeness, a view, and, a, uh, you know, so I go into something. What difference does it make which one? And, okay, so all. there, you know what I'm talking about, a store, a boutique type place. Yeah. Well, okay, so you don't encounter glum ladies positioned behind a counter in a, in a dress. Not at all. I mean, so they're hanging from the corners uh, in dungarees, but they're still glum. There's that stare, like, and mm -hmm. if you don't seem to be the type of person that fits into those trappings, forget it. I mean, I walked into one place and I just felt like Margaret Truman in there. <laughs> you know, everything about, and, and I really grasped the essentials of it. You know, I'm, I'm in full accord with, with, with uh, what's behind it, but they've, but everything about me that, you know, uh, didn't fit in, became worse in there. It, it, I, again, I, I felt that I was growing and becoming round and like uh, uh, unhip. Everything was, my hair was curling up and I, you know what I mean? And I, er, do you have, have one I of ever those? not? No, which is certainly a nice thing. And do you have any of those little t-shirts that they always wear? You know, I just, I mean, it was, hmm. I, there's no, I just. But now you feel that you have solved your, your packaging problem as you, Call no, I or? think what it is, is that I, what, I don't probably don't fit into any group. I'll have to just do it on my own, which is lonely, you. you know. There yeah, you it's go. more difficult, yeah. though. Do your own thing. 
No, yeah, it's easier all of it. if you ever give in to it. Don't you think so, Dick? What's that? What's that? <laughs> it, it, it's easier to become part of a group because then you can fiercely represent your group, you know, and all uh. be current, courageous, and fierce. But when you don't feel that you fit into anything and you just accept your own mind, it, 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 it's more difficult. It's more mm -hmm. difficult. Don't I expect you're right about that. Yeah. Of it. Have you ever felt like a second class citizen because you were a woman? Um, I, I never looked at it in quite that way, but uh -huh. I have always been very conscious of, um, of being a, a plaything, an object, a utensil, and mm -hmm. a man uh, That's looking at me. A lot of the women's lib ladies are, are objecting to. Yes, I have always objected to that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I just have been the way I've been because I can't be any other way. You know, uh, mm -hmm. in my relations with men and all, and there's no, I have, I have to be totally honest because I just can't be any other way. And the I think you are, if you're not totally honest, I don't know how anyone would know. I mean, <laughs> there's a tone that you have when you're talking that just seems like Put you on. and that it couldn't be that you were acting or anything. It's just, uh, well, it's just what you are. If, if you lie, do you sound very different from... I, I don't lie too much, but most yeah. people think I'm always lying. Oh, they take and you the don't, which is why I'm so here. comfortable here with you. You know, I mean, yeah. they, they do. They think I'm always putting on, and a lot of people that I meet who have seen me on television and what say, oh, you're just like you are, you know, or something like that. What a surprising thing uh, yeah. to be what you are. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, um, I've always objected to the image of woman uh, as presented by media. Uh, yeah someone whose loins are constantly on fire, you know, looking for <laughs> oh, I... I mean, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I mean, this just isn't true. I wish we had more time to, dis <laughs> to, uh, to discuss blazing loins, but we can't because... <laughs> The, my two friends will have to get to the theater, don't and you? And I'm exhausted. I want to tell <laughs> yes. you. I'm too tired to do the show. Following a I sentence really like that can, can get you that way. Yes, uh, emotionally you two do, drained. You, so. now, now, will you explain to the folks at home that I'm not giving you the, the heave-ho that you both do have to go No, to ladies theater. and gentlemen, Dick Cavett is throwing us both out. Good night. Good night. No one's left. I start all over again in a moment with Muhammad Ali and uh, Norman Mailer will be here. So stay where you are. We'll be back after this.